a branch of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, which is founded by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. There are thousands of branches around the world, and the founder had come on a mission from India to America in order to give the wealth of India to the world. The real wealth is knowledge through which one can realize one's perfection in life through reconnecting with Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in his first attempts to spread Krishna consciousness in India, uh, people were not as receptive because at the time, around 19, in the ni early 1960s, pardon me, uh, in India, people were looking towards the West, thinking that technology was the answer. And when Prabhupada had started a, a branch in India, it had not flourished. In fact, there was a way in which the person who had given him the lease had taken it back for some other purpose. One thing led to another, and Prabhupada begged a passage on a freighter that came to America, and then he started off on his own in the United States to spread Krishna consciousness. And he was successful. He was able to start centers in New York and San Francisco, Montreal, New Mexico, and then it spread to Boston, maybe not exactly in that order, but then he went overseas and now it's on every continent of the world. So the, the aim of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is to promote the teachings of Bhagavad Gita and other literatures like Srimad Bhagavatam for the benefit of those who are sincere seekers who want to reconnect with Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This lifetime is temporary. We're only here for a few years. We don't know how long we have. And while we're here, there's a process through which we can reawaken our relationship with Krishna. Now, Lord Krishna appeared 500 years ago, excuse me, 5,000 years ago, but again, he came 500 years ago as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu especially to teach people in the present age how to enact the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. For instance, in the Bhagavad Gita, at the end, Krishna says, Sarva dharman prityaja mame kam sharanam braja aham tong sarva pape pyo mukshai shami masuchaha Don't worry about anything, just surrender to me. Don't worry about calculating how you're going to be happy in this world, because it's most likely that you won't be. But if you surrender to me, you'll fulfill your ultimate purpose. Now, not that many people knew what to do with that, because people mostly procrastinate in this world, especially when it comes to surrendering to God. Because one thinks, well, as soon as I'm done being a child, after all, I'm a child, I have a right to play. And then when one's a youth, adolescence, one thinks, just as soon as I finish my education, then one thinks, after one gets a job, as soon as I make enough money. Now that never happens. Because you can always add more zeros, and every time you add another zero to the stack, you still think, yeah, but somebody else has more than me, and what if, you know, the government's already taking half. So it's not enough. And then we are caught unaware. And at the end, most people say, well, why didn't anybody tell me? So Krishna told everybody, but unfortunately, not that many people listened. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to remind everybody, here's how to surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and perform devotional service, just as much as a father or mother or teacher would take the hand of a student and say, here's how you write the letter A, and guide the hand, B, C, D, 
etc. Or ka 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 na, cha 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 na, ta 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 na na, pa 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 ma ma, etc. There you go. I know my alphabets, right? <laughs> so, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as Krishna himself, taught a simple process that everyone in the world could take to in order to practice this surrender. So, the simple process that he taught was recommended in the ancient Vedic literatures. It has a lot of inner meaning to it that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Shikshashtakam, which are, it's, it's a seven verses of teachings about the essence of the process of Krishna consciousness. And the first one he says that when you perform the chanting of the Lord's sacred names, then you'll become purified. Now that's a good idea because in our pure state, we're full of happiness. Ananda mayo vyasat. In fact, the Vedic literature say that as soon as you start to become purified, you'll feel joyful. Evam prasanna manaso, Bhagavad Bhakti Yogata, or from the Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, Nashochati Nashankanchati. You won't feel hankering or lamentation, and you'll feel naturally happy. And the process, he says, cleanses the heart, which he compares to a mirror. When a mirror is covered with dirt or dust, it's hard to see oneself. And it's hard to do anything properly, just like if, if you turn on the hot water in your shower room and then you try to put on some tea lock or something like that, you can't see yourself. You have to cleanse the mirror in order to properly interact. When we can't see ourselves, we don't know who we are. We're really not sure what our purpose is. So when we chant the Lord's names, which have their own spiritual power, then there's a cleansing of the mirror of, of the heart and of the mind that takes place. And then he said, we'll feel that the forest fire of material existence is being extinguished by the power of the chanting. So forest fires uh, start sometimes seemingly on their own. We know that last year some li lightning bolts without much rain came here in California and there were fires all over the place. So in, in this world, fires start sometimes even with bamboo rubbing together and then the fire starts. One way or another, there's always a conflagration. And there's a, a way in which um, we're being burned in that forest fire. Just uh, notice that hopefully you're about 98.6 right now not much higher, otherwise you got to go. Um, and that's hot. 98.6 is pretty hot. We're burning up. Uh, one uh, great uh, saint once talked about how one body to the next, we take a new body that's also burning and it will burn itself out. And he said, this is like people who are chain smokers. They're smoking a cigarette, and before the cigarette's out, then they light another one, and they start smoking that one. And they keep smoking all day because they don't want to be without it. And there's a way in which uh, our bodies are like that, too. So he said, by chanting Hare Krishna, it puts out this burning fire. We also burn in the fire of lamentation here in this world. There's always something that comes up that makes us feel that burning sensation. We lose somebody that we love. We lose something we love. We're insulted by an ignorant person and then in front of everybody and then it burns and burns. Sometimes people take care of their whole life that burn from the insult and so forth. Well, by the process of chanting Hare Krishna, that burning sensation, is extinguished, just like when there's a forest fire, all the firefighters are praying for rain because they know that they can't put it out by themselves using some helicopters. They have to have a change in the weather altogether. 
So to change the weather in our hearts and in our lives, uh, we can chant the holy names of God, which are all powerful, says Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he said, we'll start to feel a sense of uh, good fortune. We'll feel fortunate. That, and that's hard to achieve also in this world, this sense of fortune, because whatever we have comes and goes, but whatever spiritual advancement we make is permanent. And he said, we'll become full of knowledge and we'll have victory in this life by using the human form of life for the right purpose. So this is how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us to practice Krishna consciousness. It's very specifically by chanting Hare Krishna. And uh, today I was home. I started early this morning with online programs at 5 o'clock. And there were a few in a row, and some last night, about four in a row. And I was f feeling afterwards, because it takes a lot of energy sitting there and then talking and interacting. It's, it's a joyous experience, but I've, I felt I needed something, so I remembered Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's direction to chant Hare Krishna and how effective it is. So I decided to turn everything else off and just start chanting as much as possible. And it works. I, I felt immediately, well, not immediately. After, <laughs> after a while, I started to notice the effect of the transcendental vibration. And I, th I thought to myself, this, this always works. Other things, not so much. But the chanting always works. So the International Society for Krishna Consciousness specifically teaches that one should take to the process of chanting Hare Krishna. You can chant at home by learning how to uh, chant on beads and keep numerical strength by chanting a, a, a fixed number of rounds or what's called japa meditation every day. Anybody here do that? You all better raise your hands. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then... And then also, you can chant together as a group. And this is called Samkirtan. Samkirtan means that you uh, chant the names of God in a, in a call and response uh, system. And then you get the benefit of all the devotees together singing from their hearts the names of God. So let's try that. And then we'll just take a few questions after that. And then uh, in about a half hour, We'll have some announcements, and we have an offering today from what we call Bhadra Purnima, which is the uh, distribution of sets of Srimad Bhagavatams, and we'll have Artik ceremony at 4.30 today. It starts at 4.30. And then we're going to try an experiment at 5 o'clock. We're going to um, go into Samadhi and take a vow of Mona. Mona... Vrata. No more talking after five o'clock. Is that okay? Really? Wow. That's because Ramananda Saka Prabhu is running the, uh, the international uh, seminar that's going to be put on, and he needs uh, complete uh, quietude in order to get ready for it. Uh, everyone's depending on him in every part of the world to take care of it. That's how far his, he's developed his service. Go ahead. I know you want to talk. <laughs> so our gift to him today will be to, be, uh, to vacate at f f uh, 4.59 and to take Monavrat by five. Okay? Thank you. Um, I think it starts in A. Is it? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Uh, try it from A down. 
down. Krishna Hare It'll be a G sharp at the top. Namao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinayana Namaste Saraswate Deve Kodavani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtata Deshatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adraita Gadadhara Shivasari Gaura Bhakta Vinda I think it would be nice to keep the devotees on Zoom visible because I think we mostly know the mantra here. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna 
First, we have a word from our sponsor today, Yogi Plate. <laughs> Written by our own Radhabalava Prabhu, this beautiful book contains all that you need to know to be happy in life. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Please get Yogi Plate. Hare Krishna. Penguin. It's a penguin book. Oma jnana timiram dasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshuran militam nena tasmai shri gurave namaha So now I'd like to talk about transition. Transition means that we are moving from one supposed stable place to another. However, if one analyzes very carefully we're never in a stable situation here in this world. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Dehino sminyata dehe komaram yobanam jara tata dehantara praptir dhiras tatra namuyati. A person who is very sober and is able to observe what's actually going on in this world notices that he or she is changing bodies at every minute. And along with the change of bodies comes a new set of circumstances that we have to deal with. And nowadays, when I see toys, I don't feel like getting down on the ground and playing with them. Whereas, well, quite, quite some time ago, <laughs> I did <laughs> like to do that. And if we extrapolate from there and look at all the different bodies that we have, we'll notice that our likes, our needs, interests, and concerns are constantly changing in this lifetime. And we find ourselves, and I say it like that, we find ourselves as if we're being moved beyond our control into various circumstances, although we'd like to think we're making choices. Actually, we're being compelled to move by our Karma, which is a big subject that we won't get into now because we're going for the Guinness Book of Records of the shortest class ever at ISV. <laughs> and in a practical way, as we are moving about in our lives, when we face transition, we're moving from one place to another, from one job to another, uh, we can take shelter of Krishna's teachings of the Bhagavad Gita and gain a perspective through which we can also become dhira. One perspective is given in the eighth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, and that chapter is called Attaining the Supreme. Now, what bigger transition can one think of in this life other than leaving the body? And in Attaining the Supreme, Krishna talks about what happens when you leave your body. He says, Ukramantam stitam vapi bunjanan vagunan vitam vimuda nana pashanti pashanti jnana chakshusha. Someone who's jnana chakshusha, who's gained 
eyes of knowledge can see that uh, he or others are stepping out of their bodies when they leave this body. In fact, Jagarini recently sent a, a short video. I wish I could find it. I looked up for it the other day somewhere of a, a truck in India taking a corner really fast. And the whole top of the truck came off and fell, not just the cargo, but the whole cab and the, but the, the chassis with the wheels and the engine kept going. And she said, changing bodies. <laughs> what happens when we leave our body? Krishna says, the subtle body leaves, goes to the next gross body. Shariram yaravapnoti yatshap yukramatishvara. He compares it to the air passing through various areas and picking up a, an aroma. And then he carries it to the next place. It's a very subtle process. The body subtle body goes off to the next gross body and we get a new situation. Now that's a very dramatic change that we'll all go through and um, Krishna says at the end of that chapter that devotees need not worry about it that much. Not in the sense that we shouldn't prepare for it but some he says like the yogis they try to pick a particular time in which they can move out of the body and get a favorable destination because there are subtle forces in the universe that we're not so aware of in our day-to-day -day work and just living. However, yogis become very sensitized to these forces and are very deliberate about the times they leave because sometimes are more conducive than others for liberation. But Krishna says that the devotees don't worry about it because in the Gita, Krishna has said, If you remain conscious of me, then I'll carry what you lack and I preserve what you have. And when we're going through transitions in life, the main stabilizing factor is to remember Krishna. If I forget Krishna, then in any phase of my life, I will, as Krishna says in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, find myself lost in this world. But Krishna, who's in the heart, is always there giving us intelligence and support and arranging for the devotee who is dedicated to him for fulfilling his or her desires. And so it's especially important when we're in transition or we feel ourselves in transition. As I pointed out, we're always in some transition, but in major transitions to take hold of what we know is solid. And that is the connection we have with Krishna. And so one way is to make sure that we're chanting keep the transcendental vibration going. Just the process of chanting Hare Krishna every day. And as we like to say, consistency is more important than quantity. If you're very consistent with the process, then it's natural that you'll be fortified from the kinds of uh, effects of the material nature like lamentation or uh, intense desire for touching the material energy and so forth. So that's very important. And another very edifying process is to read from the Bhagavad Gita. So I'm just going to read one verse. If I find my glasses, I am. Ta-da! Glasses and masks don't go together well. <laughs> okay, so um, this is from the eighteenth, the eighth chapter, twenty-seventh verse. 
And Krishna says, although the devotees know these two paths, and he has just listed a path through which one leaves the world in light and another one in darkness, and it has to do with astrological considerations. Ar o oh Arjuna, they are never bewildered, therefore be always fixed in devotion. Purport, Krishna is here advising Arjuna that he should not be disturbed by the different paths the soul can take when leaving the material world. A devotee of the Supreme Lord should not worry whether he will depart by arrangement or by accident. The devotee should be firmly established in Krishna consciousness and chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. He should know that concern over either of these two paths is troublesome. The best way to be absorbed in Krishna consciousness is to be always dovetailed in his service. And this will make one's path to the spiritual kingdom safe, certain, and direct. The word yoga yukta is especially significant in this verse. One who is firm in yoga is, con is constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness in all his activities. Sri Rupa Goswami advises, Anasaktasya vishayan yatharham upayunjita. One should be unattached in material affairs and do everything in Krishna consciousness. By this system, which is called yukta vairagya, one attains perfection. Therefore, the devotee is not disturbed by these descriptions because he knows that his passage to the supreme abode is guaranteed by devotional service. And in the purport, Prabhupada also mentioned service. And this morning on one of the programs I attended, the host asked me, well, how is it that one can discern what one's service is in this life? Because people, he said, have different proclivities. They come from different varnas and ashrams and so forth. Not that we can tell that much. Uh, here in, in this society. And my thought is that uh, we get service from somebody who already has it. If you find somebody who's been bequeathed, could you look the word up, please? We may have already reached the uh, Guinness Book. They're, they've called in. They're saying we're doing OK, but stay on track. No. The, <laughs> That's our appreciation of everybody online. Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining online. Hare <laughs> Bol. Bequeath. Someone had better bequeath a microphone to the pundit's pit over here. May we? It's not much to add. OK. See, it rains, it pours. Bequeath, verb, pass something or pass something on or leave something to someone else. Where does it come from, pray it tell? It comes from English, be, which is about, and then quethan, say. Old English. Quethan is what? Quethan is then? say. Say? Yeah. Oh, yeah, just like by saying. Uh, I pronounced, you know, this is, you, you make the proclamation that this is mine. Good. Yeah. Anything else? Old English, bequeath, and English, quoth, and then bequeath. What is qua? It doesn't say the definition of quoth. Okay. Well, if you find someone who's got service, who has been bequeathed some service, and then you can ask for some service, and then you can start your own business from that spiritual business that now could I have a little service and then you get some service and you take it up and then it'll grow in your life so by chanting regularly and hearing from Bhagavad Gita regularly and then having some service these are very powerful ways to stay steady during a transition and they're highly recommended so a lot of people know about Bhagavad Gita or even have one on their shelf, but it's really heavy. And it's a long trip from the couch to the, <laughs> to the bookshelf. And then if you have the strength to lift it and actually open it with your fingers. Fingers are stronger on the screen. 
and then to organize your life so that you can chant. And one tip that's just very practical is put everything that you want to have regularly in your life within reach. And if you organize your space so that it's there for you and you see it in front of you, you don't have to do an extra step to get it. You're more likely to take it up. So this is the uh, practice of bhakti yoga that uh, we all sign up for when we understand the, the, the efficacy of it. And now we have about five minutes to take a few questions. Or it can be a reflection. Yes. I always um, had this question, but I want to hear from you. Um, sometimes we have the situation where we have a lot of service, and we can't make up with everything. You know, we can't catch up. And is it better to do a few services really well, or is it better to accept as many services because they're coming to you, they're mercy, the other means mercy, but then you might just drop the ball in some. What's, what's the advice? There's no stereotype because everyone has different nature. For instance, Ambarish Maharaj is known for doing many things at once. That's, that, that was his forte. And he had a lot of facility also to, to do that. He was a king. Other people like Kulavecha Sridhar, he did one thing. He, he worshipped the Ganga. He just had a simple business. And that was selling banana leaf cups and plates and so forth. And each one of them was a pure devotee in, in his own right. So it really depends on our propensity. Some people like to manage many things at one time, and other people do better keeping one thing. But I do know that it feels better when you're able to manage what you're doing. And then you have choices. If you're doing many things at once, you have to get more efficient uh, if you want to keep them all. It doesn't feel right or good to hang on to a lot of things that you can't really handle. So you have to figure out a way to uh, deal with all of them if you want to do that. And then it's possible. Prabhupada did it, but you might notice that Prabhupada actually uh, was trying to simplify whenever he could. He was always looking for those he could delegate to. In fact, he wrote many times, please take over all these management issues so I can translate. And so ultimately, uh, it seems that... Uh, Although we may have several duties, most people like to s specialize in something. But um, we have examples. Ramananda Saka, he's some over here. He does a lot of service w with the broadcasting, and then he's doing the deity worship at the same time. You're doing many projects at the same time. So it's good to stop and evaluate and see how I'm doing, and then... If, if you can't handle them all, then you have to get a cabinet. You know what that is? Like the president has a cabinet. Yeah. That's why people, uh, do you, Bhaktivatsal Prabhu, you want to comment? Thank you. I was thinking of this just today. <clears throat> There's an old saying that goes, you can't keep what you have unless you give it away. And it's it, it's interesting if you look at like Ramananda Saka who teaches everybody deity worship. He still is doing deity worship and he's teaching other people to do it too. So many hands make for light work or cooking in the kitchen if, you, if you're good at that or Ujula Rasa if you could teach us how to make those wonderful cakes. You're, you keep what you have, but you're also giving it away and training other people to do that service. Yeah. I used to go and do the Rathayatra in San Francisco by myself when I realized nobody was doing a book table and I was angry and then I thought I should be angry at myself. And then for several years I did it and now uh, 
now they won't even let me do anything. Uh, <laughs> same with Los Angeles Rathiatra. And uh, that's Krishna's mercy. And so, you know, there are ways which, if you, you can hand on your service to others, it's really nice because you, you never go without when you hand it on to others as well. We have about three minutes left, and there's some online. So, um, Nritya, is that Nritya? Nritya Gopal? Krishna Das from New Zealand says, Bhaktivinoda Thakur Maharaj chanted 64 rounds of Maha Mantra during his Grahasta years. As per your lecture yesterday, we know his schedule was very fixed and allocated. 4.30 a.m. to 7. 4.30 to 7 a.m., two and a half hours for chanting with the remainder of the day for other services. I don't know, did you ever try it? <laughs> Just see if you can do it and then you can report back. This chanting 64 rounds is, uh, is a, is a uh, it takes a, a very serious effort if you're gonna do it every day. Um, I know from doing it in Vrindavan that I, I just noticed, and you're not supposed to talk about your vows and everything, but this is, you know, but in Vrindavan, chanting 64 rounds, I know that I would very consciously start early in the morning and then after Mangal Artik or in the morning program, I take the back route to my apartment because I didn't want to talk to anybody. And you know, in Vrindavan during Kartik, people come up and say, hey, how are you? Where do you live nowadays? And that's five minutes, 10 minutes lost, and you can't afford that. And uh, we know that Bhaktivinoda Thakur uh, kept compartmentalized uh, programs to, you know, for his service. I can't comment more than that because I don't know. Sh Shruti Kirti was once asked about Prabhupada, you know, when did he chant his japa and things like that. He answered Prabhupada was always chanting 24 hours a day whenever he saw him. In any situation, the main stabilizing factor is remembering Krishna. Nam Chintamani Devi Dasi. Thank you very much. So, um, today is a special program. It is the continuation of, or the culmination of our Bhajra Purnima. And before we um, get to the offering of, uh, made by ISV, which we're going to do very shortly uh, here to Srila Prabhupada, to all the deities, uh, we have a few announcements. Is it too early to start announcements? I'm way ahead of time, right? That's pretty good. No one's ever seen this before. Okay, we'll take one more question. Hansapriya? I just wanted to comment on the the video that you were mentioning about that the truck in India that was making a turn and the body of the truck fell off and the driver with the, you know, with the bottom of the truck just continues to drive, the subtle body leaves. And uh, when I looked into that video first, it just made me think that even though the truck was like almost falling apart anyway, and 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 we know in uh, our life also that our body can fall apart any day or any time, uh, but we don't really just think on day to day basis that you know this subtle body will leave, and we don't really we think that our body is healthy till the death. So, so even though we notice this, we can't really think until something this video comes along. I mean, it's not like if I want to wake up thinking, okay, my body's going to fall apart. But what's the best way to keep this in mind and without being like getting so, you know, uh, 
freaked out about it. Well, um, Bhagavatam reminds us frequently. When we read Bhagavatam, for instance, Shukadeva Goswami says, Deha patra kalatra deshu apasaini so satsapi tesham pramato nidhanam pashyanapi napashyati. All the things like your body, your family, your money that you think are protecting you, he said, uh, be aware they're fallible soldiers. And in the story of Paranjana, we hear the, the journey of a soul in this world looking for happiness, getting settled. And then we see the trajectory that he leaves his body, he takes another birth, another place according to his consciousness at the time of death. So if you read Bhagavatam every day, which is our custom, it's our practice, you'll be reminded regularly that this is what's actually going on and don't become complacent. So it's important to hear. And Krishna says in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam, uh, Shruti Pratyakshamani uh, Aniyam, Aitiyam, Shruta Pratyaksham Aitiyam, Anumanam Chatushpadam, uh, Pramanesh Panavastanad Vikalpatsavirajite, which means you should use four systems to observe how the world is unstable. Vikalpatsavirajite, and then you should become uh, a little detached from it. Virajite. And that is that you should use Shruti, hearing, Pratyaksha, see for yourself. <laughs> it's happening all around us. Uh, Aitiyam means traditional wisdom, and Anuman means logical deduction. So if, if we keep that at the surface, but not so that we become neurotic, it's a, a stimulus for us to stay on track and remember that life is a test. We're following in the footsteps of, of Parikshit Maharaj by preparing ourselves. Think of life as a preparation and be a little serious. Those who realize this, they take to the Bhajana Kriya. They say, they follow Prahlad Maharaj. They say, it's, you know, never too soon. As soon as you figure it out, that it's, this is a, a, an amazing opportunity. Labbam sadur labbam idam bahusam bhavante. You don't get an opportunity like this very easily. And also that we're in a precarious situation, so you should take it very seriously. If someone's able to stay in this awareness, then he or she will have a monicum of steadiness through every aspect of life, as I was describing before. And sometimes it's harder than others, but dying without being prepared is the worst of all. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. We should uh, stick together, help each other, remind ourselves and others around us who want to be reminded, and even some who don't, that it's really important to stay steady in the practice of devotional service. Thank you for such a nice question, Hansa Priya. Who is that? Uh, this is uh, Rohit Maharaj. Really? Wow. We got Rohit from Coimbatore? Yes, Maharaj. That's a big deal. Maharaj, I was just remembering uh, something that we used to read in our school days. Uh, which I've been taking very lightly. There was a, there's a Greek philosopher, Heraclitus, who um, used to say that all the time that no man steps in the same river twice, but it's not the same river and he's not the same man. Uh, it's like when, you're, when, you're, when there's a uh, moving water body, you never step into the same water twice because it's constantly changing. There's constant flux, there's constant transition. I was able to relate to that, relate that with uh, the concept of transition that he was speaking. And he also say, goes on to say that although the water is constantly moving, if you um, get yourself fixed on the rock bottom, the, the rock that is at the, at the, the bed of the river, which is never moving, it's always fixed, you remain fixed and you're not carried away by the water, by the constant flux. So I was able to relate that with what you said, that the only, um, throughout the transitions that we're going through in life, uh, if, we, if we keep ourselves fixed in the Holy Name and the chanting of Bhagavad Gita, we are not, we save ourselves from being carried away by the constant flux of this material world. So I uh, just a tiny reflection with the Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. That was very helpful. There's a, a, a similar mention of this in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, 
when they're when Krishna is speaking to Uddhava, he gives a definition of birth and death, and in s several verses he also mentions the river, and how it's constantly moving. However, we identify it as one thing, so it's parallel with what that philosopher said. Thank you very much, Rohit. Okay, so now uh, we've we're counting down to the last few minutes before we make an offering, and I hope that our uh, Sankirtan leaders are in the building. Are they? They're hiding out, though, with pen-crunching numbers, right? Afraid to be called because they're not ready yet. I would like to acknowledge some devotees. First, as a DT Somani who so generously sponsored the Sunday feast, her son, Ryan, is turning four years old today. Haribo! Thank you. Ryan, we pray to Srila Ryan, Prabhupada. Rian. Rian. Sorry, Rian. I uh, ruined your birthday. Rian. <laughs> My apologies. Thanks. Dear Srila Prabhupada, dear Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, dear Sri Sri Panchatattva, Sri Sri Radha Mandan Mohan, Sri Sri Lakshmana Shingadev, if you so desire, please bless our very dear Rian with pure devotional service. Please empower him to spread Christian consciousness and please always protect him from all sides. Thank you for considering our request. Everyone who appreciates this prayer in part or in whole, please say Hare Krishna for Rian. Hare Krishna. Rian, we're all here appreciating you on your fourth birthday and we're never gonna forget this day. Hare Krishna. Somebody okay, take yeah. a screenshot, because that's an adorable picture. Okay, next. Praveen Prabhu is sponsoring today's Sunday feast also for his father's memory. Let's say um, a Mahamantra in remembrance of Praveen Prabhu's very dear father. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. Now, you do realize that we're in Bhadra Purnima and that uh, your, whatever sets of books that you've d given for will be uh, read at the big yagya. Actually, we're, gonna st we're starting tonight. We have a program starting tonight at Naimasharanya. It'll be broadcast live from there tonight and tomorrow. By popular demand, we couldn't cover the whole earth planet in one day so we're taking it two days so many devotees are calling in and wanting to be part of it it's amazing in fact our uh, my god brother uh, Udayananda Prabhu uh, called in today from Sacramento he just built a temple up there uh, in his house and is inviting all of us to come up there so uh, he 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 wanted to know how to get in on the Vajra Purnima, and he was a little annoyed with me that I hadn't told him about it earlier, <laughs> seeing that he is a bona fide center now. Uh, so I think Malini contacted him, or SKP. SKP contacted him and worked it all out, so we avoided a uh, uh, confrontation. <laughs> it was close, however. So this is a big deal, uh, Vajra Purnima, all over the world, Hong Kong, started just last month and they said, well, maybe we can do f five sets and now they're doing 62. And uh, we talked to the devotees in Fiji. Fiji said, where are we gonna get any sets over here? And you know, we don't know anybody and this and that. And now they started, they said, we'll do two sets. And now they're doing something like 32 sets. So this is indicative of how this process works. It's actually, as they say, blowing up all over the world. People are taking this uh, Krishna consciousness. And the devotees are feeling, we, we heard from great sadhus today, including Mahatma Prabhu and His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj, Her Grace Rukmini Devi, and Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj, all the way from Africa, who said, what took you so long to invite me to your show? <laughs> this, you know, international broadcast, which was very touching because it meant that everybody is appreciating book distribution everywhere and wants to be a part of it. 
So we're really lucky because we're right in the middle of it. And we've got full access to this service. So now let's see if we actually have our Sanctuary leaders in the building. Now, one reminder, we're going to stand up, make the offering. Then um, we're going to have the Arctic. And then at 4.59, we're finished and we're all leaving. And there's Maunavrat, no talking in here because Ramananda Saka Prabhu, oh, he's over there, needs to have complete quietude to concentrate on his getting set up for the international broadcast. It takes a lot of work to do. He needs a couple hours of quiet to put it all together, okay? Let's practice. When I say three, one, two, three. No, you just broke your vrat. Okay. Let's all uh, move the asans and we'll stand up. Vancha kalpa drushcha kripa sindhaveva cha patitanam pavanibyo vaishnavibyo namunamaha. And remember, everybody, Yogi Plate. Today's program is brought to you by Yogi Plate. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. If you can hear me, raise your hand. Everybody move in. And then now we're going to have the contiguous offering from Bhakti community to the Sankirtan book distribution, starting with His Grace, Jai Madhava Prabhu. Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept our most humble obeisances at the dust of your lotus feet. All glories to your divine grace. We are gathered here to offer the results of our monthly Sankirtan festival for Bhadra Purnima 2021, titled Go to Goloka. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 12, Chapter 12, Text 58 and 59, Translation. 
O Brahmanas, I have thus described to you the glories of the Supreme Lord Vasudev, whose extraordinary activities are most worthy of glorification. This narration destroys all that is inauspicious. One who with undeviating attention constantly recites this literature at every moment of every hour, as well as one who faithfully hears even one verse or half a verse or a single line or even half a line certainly purifies his very self. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam 7.6.24 purport states that if one sincerely tries his best to spread Krishna consciousness by preaching the glories of the Lord and his supremacy, even if he is imperfectly educated, he becomes the dearmost servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is bhakti. As one performs the service for humanity, without discrimination between friends and enemies, the Lord becomes satisfied, and the mission of one's life is fulfilled. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore advised everyone to become a guru devotee and preach Krishna consciousness. Yare dekha tare kahe Krishna Upadesh. That is the easiest way to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By such preaching, the preacher becomes satisfied, and those to whom he preaches are also satisfied. This is the process of bringing peace and tranquility to the entire world. With blessings of His Grace Vaishika Prabhu and Her Grace Nirakulua Mataji, Bhakti community continued this MSF to inspire newcomers to pursue Bhakti through programs such as Bhakti Yan, Bhakti Circle, Sadhana, Success Sadhana and Women's Circle. Bhakti community has now grown to 250 members. Yes. Bhakti community's sole purpose is to associate newcomers with Vaishnavas so that newcomers can progress in Bhakti Yoga. Vaishnava Sangha Lava or VSL is a metric that measures how many times a newcomer comes in association with a Vaishnava through a devotional service class. For this MSF, Bhakti community Silicon Valley's goal was to achieve 294 Vaishnava Sangha Lavas. We are very happy to report that Bhakti community smashed the goal and achieved 581 VSLs. <laughs> For this MSF, Spiritual Circle's goal was to achieve 26 VSLs. We are very happy to report that Spiritual Circle came close to the goal by earning 24 VSLs. Yes. 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 They also sent 40 care messages. We are eternally indebted and grateful to all the volunteers, room leaders, speakers and book distributors who work tirelessly every day to fulfill Sri Prabhupada's mission to spread Krishna consciousness in the Western world. We also want to thank each of our donors who help us maintain Bhakti community. And finally, our most heartfelt, sincere gratitude to His Grace Vaishika Prabhu. It's only due to your presence, leadership and motivation that the Bhakti community exists and is thriving. We'll pay at the lotus feet of your, your grace to bless the Bhakti community to help spread Lord Chaitanya's mission to every town and village in the Western world. Bhakti community gets the opportunity to serve newcomers due to the tireless efforts of the book distribution team who introduced Bhakti community to these newcomers. Now Mali Mataji will present the book distribution results. With respect to books, Team ISV had a goal to distribute at least 2,000 Srimad Bhagavatam sets from Gaur Purnima until today. When the goal is huge and seems impossible, we have seen devotees taxing their brains for ideas and venues to distribute these sets. Here are some of the highlights of this MSF. Kids participated enthusiastically for door-to-door -door Sankirtan and over the phone glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam to family back in India. Totally, they distributed 74 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. And 
they collected $5,716 in Lakshmi. <laughs> Bhakti SF team continues to distribute books in the greater San Francisco area. Motel Gita participated at the annual Ahua Convention in Dallas, and Motel Gita continued to reach out to temples to place Srimad Bhagavatams in hotels and to place Bhagavad Gita and other transcendental literatures. For this MSF, Motel Gita team distributed 201 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. A team of enthusiastic devotees from the Wisdom of the Sages group came forward and sponsored 10 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. As we speak, they are continuing to promote Srimad Bhagavatam and will keep receiving scores until tomorrow. Western Sankirtan team had a major breakthrough and they distributed many Bhagavatam sets on the streets of Bay Area and beyond. They distributed Srimad Bhagavatam sets at Mountain View Art and Wine Festival, Monterey Old Fisherman's Wharf, Santa Cruz Downtown, and Indian grocery stores. They also made two promotional videos of kids reading and preaching Srimad Bhagavatam. Gram Vidyadan video testimonial from Gujarat had touched many people's hearts. The result is that they distribute a total of 210 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. <laughs> which were distributed and placed in Indian villages, surpassing their goal of 150 sets. Team Bhagavata Seva continues to have success conducting online classes for children and adults. Bhagavata Se Seva team distributed 228 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. <laughs> Just this MSF, and they collected $34,628 in Lakshmi. <laughs> and from Gaur Purnima to Bhadra Purnima, Bhagavad Seva team distributed a total of 336 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. <laughs> Team ISV launched Gram Vidyadan program in collaboration with NIFTA and ISKCON Daivi Varnashram Ministry. And we have seen great success with this program. And 535 Srimad Bhagavatam sets were placed in villages due to this program. During Radhashtami celebrations, in response to requests made by His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu, ISV devotees profusely sponsored for Srimad Bhagavatam sets. On this historic weekend, Team ISV collected $127,400 in Lakshmi. <laughs> The 
the corporate Sankirtan team again made a huge contribution for Bhadra Purnima and they distributed 830 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. And they collected $68,002.45 in Lakshmi. <laughs> As we make this offering of the MSF results, Srila Prabhupada, we are pleased to report that it has been a historic MSF at ISV. All the goals have been successfully met, surpassed, and smashed. <laughs> With respect to books, in all, more than 350 families participated in book distribution. Team ISV accrued 151,149.05 book points, which includes, in just three weeks, Team ISV distributed 2,043 Srimad Bhagavatam sets. <laughs> Team ISV raised 243,705 dollars in Lakshmi in just three weeks, surpassing the last year's Lakshmi of 216,168 dollars and 55 cents. <laughs> From Gaur Purnima until Badra Purnima, Team ISV distributed 2,586 Srimad Bhagavatam sets, smashing the goal of 2,000 and surpassing the last year's total of 1,894 sets. <laughs> We thank all the devotees, donors, and our Sankirtan team who contributed profusely for this MSF. And we express our deepest gratitude to our beloved Vaisheshika Prabhu, Nirakula Mataji, and all of Srila Prabhupada's disciples who are inspiring us to continue in this mission. <laughs> We offer our special gratitude to His Holiness Giriraj Swami Maharaj for his declaration that Team ISV can smash the goal. <laughs> we pray at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and you, Srila Prabhupada, to continue your blessings on Team ISV so that we can continue distributing. Thousands of Srimad Bhagavatam said. Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan ki. Shri Mahaprabhu ki. Shri Shri Lakshmi Nashinga Dev ki. 
శిల ప్రభుపాదకి గౌరవ ప్రేమానందే and our special thanks to SKP Malini Jai Madhava Prabhu Pavani Bhakti Shraddha Devi Dasi and all the leaders who work together in full cooperation for one goal to please Srila Prabhupad and the previous acharyas through the distribution of this knowledge thank you very much to all of you hari krishna నిత్య నామే నమస్తే సరస్వతి దే గౌరవాణి
Shiva <laughs> Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrindiki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gokopina Sham Kund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Shri Vindaman Nam Ki Jai Shri Mai Poonam Dittam Ki Jai Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Jumuna Devi Gai Devi Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vrindiki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Namaste Narasimhaya. Namaste Narasimhaya. 
Ahalaladadadayine Hiranyakashipur Vakshaha Shivatanka Nakalaye Ito Nishingha Parato Nishingo Yato Yato Yam Ito Nishingha Vahir Nishingo Radaye Nishingo Shadamarin Sharanam Prapadye Kavakara Kamal Lavade Nakama Dutta Shingam Dalita Eden Nakashi Dutani Shingam Kesha Patrita Dada Hari Nupa Jaja Gati Shahari
passed out just outside this door. And we thank everyone very much for coming to visit us here at Iskan Silicon Valley today. If you have any questions, you can meet one of the uh, uh, greeters outside. That's good, a meter and a greeter can come together and uh, get any more information that you need. And we will see you back here at the normal time. Is that true? No, nothing's normal next week. Uh, something, anyway, we'll announce uh, the next timings. Now, um, we're going to uh, clear the temple room because we have some work to do to get ready for an international broadcast. They'll be starting at seven o'clock from Naimasharanya in India. They'll be going until uh, past midnight and the uh, technicians have to have the room and quiet to quietude in order to get it together. Thank you very much. Thank you.